Fourth place Leicester City were in the midst of a wonderful spell in the Premier League. They briefly topped the league in October for the first time in the top flight since 1963. They had a UEFA Cup campaign, even if it did end in the first round at Red Star Belgrade and win the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. The year was 2001. Wickham Wanderers had been a middling second division team ever since their successive promotions into the Football League from the conference in 1993. They were set for another mid-table finish under Laurie Sanchez. Then there was Roy Essendor. A Ghanaian born in Belfast, Essendor started his professional career in Scotland and would play 10 league games in Britain with Motherwell and East Fife before moving to Austria and then to Finland. He returned to Britain playing two games for Rushton Diamonds of the conference. Less than a week before the FA Cup quarterfinal between the two, Wickham manager Laurie Sanchez listed an advert on CFAX for a fit, non-cup type striker. Roy Essendor's agent replied and a two-week contract was signed, March the 10th, 2001. Leicester had gone through York, Aston Villa and Bristol City and were expected to steamroll through Wickham, who had eliminated Harrow, Millwall, Grimsby, Wolves and Wimbledon and had long outstayed their welcome in the FA Cup. Of course, Paul McCarthy opened the scoring up for Wickham at Filbert Street on 50 minutes, muzzy as it was on hand to return the match back to the script with an equaliser 18 minutes later. The tie was going to a replay as it stood. Then Roy Essendor was thrown on by Laurie Sanchez. Sanchez, of course, was a big part of Cup folklore himself, having scored the winner for Wimbledon in the biggest FA Cup final upset of all time in 1988 against Kenny Dalglish's Liverpool. Sanchez this time was on the other side of the white paint and this time Roy Essendor, who leapt high, headed home in second half stoppage time. Filbert Street was stunned and Wickham progressed to face none other than Liverpool at Villa Park in their first ever FA Cup semi-final. There, the dream died. Essendor came on from the bench against Liverpool but they were eliminated 2-1. Liverpool went on to win the cup as part of a cup treble in 2001, beating Arsenal with two late Michael Owen goals at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. Leicester went on to lose 8 Premier League games on the bounce, picking up just 3 points from a possible 30 and plummeted from a possible Champions League place to 13th in the space of 2 months. Leicester have not got beyond the quarterfinals of the FA Cup ever since. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if... Roy Essendor never used the superbly 90s popular newsfeed CFAX. The scores remained at 1-1 and instead of looking to his dwindling bench, Laurie Sanchez entrusted the remainder of the match with his 11 already on the pitch. Muzzy as it had equalised for Leicester and sure enough, the Premier League favourites won out in the end through Matt Elliott late on. Leicester's league form kept them in the chasing pack for a top 3 finish on the final day that meant Champions League football at Filbert Street. Leicester had lost just 2 of the remaining games in the running. In that running they had played more games than their rivals, Liverpool, Leeds and Ipswich, due to their cup run which continued through to the final. Dean Sturridge's 78th minute winner against Liverpool at Villa Park ensured Leicester's first FA Cup final since 1969. Leicester's run in the FA Cup finals was rotten and was as follows. 1949, they lost 3-1 to Wolves. 1961, they lost 2-0 to Tottenham. 1963, they lost 3-1 to Manchester United. 1969, they lost 1-0 to Manchester City. And just like in 1969, there was a solitary goal but unlike 1969, and any of their other four finals for that matter, it went into Leicester's favour, Muzzy as it striking two minutes from time in Cardiff. Leicester were guaranteed European football in the FA Cup either way, but the real prize was at Europe's top table, the Champions League. In order for that to be achieved, Leicester needed to win at Elland Road and hope Charlton beat Liverpool at the Valley and Derby Hall at Ipswich at Pride Park, the latter of which happened but the first two didn't transpire. Leeds picked up a win over Leicester and leapfrog Liverpool could only manage a draw at Charlton. Leicester remained 6 whilst Leeds were the team to join Arsenal and Manchester United in the Champions League. The following season the state of play returned to form. Leicester consolidated a mid-table position whilst the extra Champions League berth as of 2001-2 season allowed both Liverpool and Leeds to qualify for the Champions League alongside United and Arsenal. Leicester however did have quite the run in Europe, so did Liverpool for that matter, who were hunting for their second successive UEFA Cup and fourth overall. Leicester was spat out in Bulgaria, Israel and Russia before Christmas whilst Liverpool won in Portugal, France and Switzerland. Both would return to the tournament after Christmas, unlike Ipswich who were dispatched by Inter Milan in the third round. Liverpool went double Dutch, defeating Feyenoord and PSV that left a final four that contained Inter Milan and AC Milan, as well as Liverpool and the Dark Horses, Leicester City. AC Milan would prove to be the insurmountable task for Leicester, Peter Taylor's men losing 6-1 on aggregate thanks to a capitulating 6-0 defeat at the San Siro. Liverpool on the other hand would conquer both Milan clubs, 
winning what would be their final FA Cup before returning to the Champions League full-time for the first time since the Hazel disaster. Leeds also made a European final. The likes of Borussia Dortmund, Barcelona, Roma, Bayer Leverkusen were picked off before two draws in the semi-final with Manchester United earned Leeds a place in the Glasgow final with Real Madrid. Leeds had a European Cup final to their name, a 2-0 loss to Bayern Munich in 1975. The same fate would be translated from Paris to Glasgow thanks to a Zinedine Zidane winner at Hampden Park. Leeds would return to the final 12 months later and after defeating both AC Milan and Inter Milan, a third Italian club would prove too much. Juventus ran out 2-0 winners at Old Trafford, but Leeds wouldn't stop there. A third successive second place in the league behind a resurgent Manchester United offered Leeds a chance at a third successive Champions League final in Gelsenkirchen. They'd eliminated Inter Milan from the group stage, Celta Vigo from the last 16 and Chelsea in the quarter-finals, and after a period of extra time, Monaco, to guarantee Leeds another final. This time they were the favourites, this time they faced Porto and Jose Mourinho. Alan Smith netted both goals in a 2-1 win, now Leeds were the team to beat in Europe. They were afforded a reasonable run to another final in Istanbul in 2005. Werder Bremen and PSV were beaten as Leeds broke no sweat in reaching the semi-final. They were in for a treble. They led Leeds by a point in the league, whilst Arsenal were coming up in an FA Cup final at the Millennium Stadium. They squeezed through AC Milan on penalties, the prize being the first all-English final with Liverpool. Liverpool needed to win in Istanbul to earn Champions League football for the following season, having finished fifth behind Manchester United, who had confirmed fourth place. Leeds, on the other hand, had thrown away the league title on the penultimate day. Arsenal swept to a fourth title in seven years, just as they had swept to an FA Cup title, first with a win over Leeds in the semi, and then Manchester United in the final on penalties. Leeds had a final crack at silverware in Istanbul, and if they were successful in doing so, they'd become the first club since Rigo such as AC Milan to retain the Champions League. They sauntered into a 3-0 half-time lead, but within seven second half minutes, Liverpool had overturned the lead thanks to goals from Xabi Alonso, Steven Gerrard, and a double from Vladimir Smitsa. They had completed the greatest Champions League comeback of all time. Let's take it to the winners and losers. Wickham Wanderers. Losers because after their ambitious cup run in 2001, Wickham would fade out of the Football League in 2005 and remain in non-league of English football. Leeds United, winners, because they, like Leicester, would stave off relegation and remain a Premier League side, reaching a number of European Cup finals with varying degrees of success. Leicester City, also winners, because they would stave off relegation, have a run in Europe and solidify themselves as a Premier League club forevermore. This video was made as part of the What If Football launch day. Each week, starting from Monday morning, a new scenario will be published right here on YouTube.